Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited yet another day because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how my dad makes his cabbage. No, I haven't tasted this recipe, but we're going to give it a try. Okay, so listen, when I come back, we'll go through the ingredients. Be right back. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. The first thing that you will need is organic cabbage. So we have two large heads here and it must be, my dad says it must be organic cabbage. Now if we make our way this way, you're going to need some beautiful veggies, which is going to give you a great color and it's going to bump up that flavor. You're going to need some green bell pepper and a red bell pepper. And also you can't have cabbage without some cornbread on the side. So we'll be making some cornbread, but that's not the video. Let's make our way this way and I'm going to show you the meat that you're going to need. We are going to be using some um, Hillshire Farm beef smoked sausage and we're going to use two packets and we're going to use a pinch or two of sugar. You're going to need some garlic powder, black pepper, and salt. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, supposed to be amazing recipe. I couldn't be more excited for this recipe. So the first thing that we're gonna do, you wanna wash off your cabbage. And like I said, definitely make sure that your cabbage is organic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a number like this just to try to cut down into it, okay? And as far as this stem here, we're not gonna use this stem because the stem gets a little tough. You know, even after you cook it, it does get tough. All right, so we're gonna work our way around the stem just like so in this manner. Now, as far as this recipe goes, I have not tried this recipe. This is not a recipe that I grew up on. This is something that my dad has came up with through the years and he constantly keeps telling me about this recipe and he calls me Nina and he says, Nina, listen, you must try it. You have to try it. You have to use the organic uh, cabbage. He says, once you try it organic, you'll never go back to buying regular cabbage. And so I'm like, okay, one day I'll try it. Well, last week I got to sitting in the bedroom and I was thinking I need to try dad's new cabbage style. So that's what we're gonna do today and I'm gonna be trying it with you all. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's get it nice and cut up. And you see, I just threw the stem away. This is how I like to cut my cabbage. I don't want huge pieces, but then again, I don't want little tiny pieces. So, you know, something like that. So we're gonna cut two whole cabbages. Anytime I make cabbage, I have to use two heads because that's how much we love cabbage. We need enough because I'm gonna have two bowls. I know I'm, when I start out, I'm gonna have two bowls if I like it, if I like it. All right, so let's continue to get this nice and chopped up and I'll be back. So we have some cabbage that's nice and cut and we've washed our cabbage off with cold water once again. So now what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and cut some beautiful color and some amazing flavor. Okay, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, just like so, pretty simple, right? All right. I hope that you all are having an amazing day today. Let me know in the comment section below when is the last time you all had some homemade cabbage. I think it's about time for everybody to grab a pot. Let's make some cabbage together. All right, so now, here's what I'm gonna do. Nothing special, you know? Just cut it up so we can get some color in there. And also we wanna add some flavor to the cabbage. I like that cut, I'm pretty happy with that. It feels like fall, it's beginning to feel like fall outside. It's beautiful, the leaves are starting to change and it's getting a little chilly outside. All right, so now I'm gonna to continue to cut up these bell peppers and I'll be right back. So we got our bell peppers nice and chopped up just like so. Now what you're gonna notice the difference between my recipe and my dad's recipe is with my recipe, I put onions. This recipe has no onions and this recipe also doesn't have uh, fresh garlic like I put in mine. So I'm, I'm so, so, so excited to try this recipe. So now here's what we're gonna do. We are going to cut the beef sausages just like so, okay? 
gorgeous. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna saute them up to get some nice color onto them before this goes into our cabbage. I guess there's a couple of different ways you could do it. And what you could do is you could just throw it in, look at that beautiful sausage. You could just throw it in just like this into your cabbage and let it cook down and let that beautiful juice come out of this beef sausage. Now, like I said, what I'm choosing to do is give them some color. So we're gonna grab us a frying pan, get some color on both sides, and once that happens, I'll show you all what you should do next. So what I wanna do is I'm using the wok. Let's go ahead and get some cabbage into your pan. Now listen here, um, cabbage will wilt down. Uh, cabbage will be this high and then you know 20 minutes later it'll be way down here so you can really stuff it in there because it'll definitely wilt down like I said so let's get our cabbage in just like so and what we're going to do with the veggies is we're going to throw in just a little bit of veggies right now and then the other half will go in later so it can stay nice and vibrant as far as those veggies they'll kind of cook down into flavor land you know <clears throat> and they may, they'll get really soft and I'm okay with that as long as I put these in last so they can stay nice, beautiful, and vibrant and still give us some crunch. Okay, so let's get this on the stove and my dad says that you don't need any liquid. You don't need any liquid, you don't need any water, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna get this on the stove on a medium heat with the lid with no liquid. So behind me, I have the cabbage cooking and I have the spices right beside the stove because soon as that cabbage starts to wilt down a little bit, then we'll go in with some seasonings. Now what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and saute up this beautiful sausage so that we can get a gorgeous color. Listen, what I always like to say about sausages like these or a piece of ham, if you can get a nice sear onto it, it really brings out the amazing flavor in the sausage. So I'm gonna have to do a couple different batches and I'm okay with that. So I'll do two different batches and we want golden brown on both sides just like so. And how we're gonna cook this? Oh, like a medium heat. Be right back to show you all what we'll do next. So now that our sausages are starting to brown up, what you wanna do is think about the option of whether you wanna put potatoes in your cabbage. A lot of people like to. Now my dad says um, sometimes he'll put potatoes in his cabbage, sometimes he won't. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something just a little different with the potatoes because I, I, I have a hard time eating cabbage without potatoes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make some uh, quartered potatoes like Grandmom Lucille used to do. And she would just peel her potatoes just like so, okay? And then she would quarter them just like so in this manner. We're gonna get them nice and boiled up. And then once they boil, once they become nice and fork tender, what we're gonna do is we're going to drain them. We're gonna slather them in butter and we're gonna uh, sprinkle some garlic powder, salt and pepper onto these bad boys. So I'm gonna cut about maybe let's just say six of these. This is what they should look like when they're nice and quartered. And you'll know when they're done because they'll be fork tender. The fork will go inside of the potato and slide out with ease. Don't forget, to season your potatoes with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and slather it with butter. Okay, so now we should be getting some color. Look at that, yes. The more color, the better it tastes. Look at that. Like I said, keep in mind you don't have to take this step, but when you take an extra step like this, you're gonna get some amazing flavor. Okay, so look at that. And we're gonna make sure that we drain the sausage so we don't have that excess oil in our cabbage. And, or if you wanted to, you can pour a little bit of this flavored oil into your cabbage. We'll give you much flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to cook these soft sausages and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're here at the cabbage at the larger stove. And yes, my dad was right. You don't need water because if you look down in the bottom, there is water in the bottom, which will naturally happen from the cabbage. Okay, so now's the perfect time to season. Get you some garlic powder in there. Don't be afraid to season. You need the season in order for it to taste good, you know? You can put a little bit of red pepper flakes in here if you wanted to. That's black pepper and there's salt. Not a lot of salt, don't get crazy with it. And when I say just a pinch or two of sugar, it's really optional, it's up to you. 
All right, that little bit. Is it gonna make it sweet? Not at all, don't worry about that. And we're gonna go with half of that sausage that's already been pre-cooked. And then we have the other sausages cooking on the stove. Once they're nice and golden brown, we'll add that in as well. So now what I wanna do is we're gonna to throw together really quickly um, some cornbread. We can't have cabbage without cornbread, so I have two large eggs. Okay, let's get that cracked into two boxes of cornbread. Now, those of you, um, if you want a homemade cornbread recipe, feel free to check out my homemade cornbread recipe, okay? Sometimes it's easier to do a number like this, you know? There's sugar going in. You don't have to use sugar if you don't want to. And then we're going to put some milk in and give it a nice stir. Just like so. And I have two pans over here that are have been oiled. We're gonna throw this in the oven 355 degrees until it's nice, beautiful, and golden brown. Time to put the cornbread in the oven. Let's go ahead now, get it in the oven, and then after that, what we're going to do is we're gonna add the remainder of the sausage. In we go with the cornbread. Then we'll add the remainder of the sausage in with our cabbage, give it a nice stir. It's almost done. Potatoes are almost done boiling. Let's go ahead and add this remainder sausage in, just like so. Any of that good juice, get that in there too. Don't waste it. And then we're going to go in with these bell peppers. It's going to still have some bite to them. And like I said, they're going to remain nice and vibrant because we're not going to cook them as long as we cook the others. And if you look down in the pan, we have liquid. <laughs> And we did not put any broth in here. We did not put any water in here. And like I said, I can't um, stress it enough that the cabbage has its own liquid. And I was worried for a second because you know me, I put liquid in my cabbage, but we already have it. Look at that. Can't wait to taste this. So we have our potatoes that have boiled for 25 minutes until they're nice and fork tender. We have drained them. Now what I'm gonna use, use any kind of butter you have. I'm gonna use some Smart Balance today and literally we are going to slather the butter on, okay? So now I feel like that's enough because once it melts, then we're gonna toss those potatoes around in all that butter. And you're just gonna use a little bit of salt. Your loved ones can use more salt if they want to. Okay, just like so, that's how grandma would do it and then she would sprinkle on some salt and pepper. Here at the Young's house, we put salt, pepper, and garlic powder and a little bit of parsley flakes just to make everything nice and beautiful. Now, if you wanna talk about my dad's potatoes going into his cabbage, what he would do is cut his potatoes and then he would boil his potatoes in with the cabbage that lasts 15 minutes. So if you wanna do it that way, feel free to. Absolutely, so now what we're gonna do, put some parsley flakes on there just like so. And then I'm gonna run this way really quickly. Let's grab some of that butter and kind of put it right on top, just like so. We're gonna cover this up so that that butter can steam. And then we'll go back in and mix everything up just like so. When I come back, the cabbage will be done. I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all are gonna get that first bite. Okay, everyone, so our cabbage is done. Now, my dad wanted me to let you all know to only cook this cabbage for around 25 to 30 minutes. You don't want to overcook it, which is true. And he also wanted to tell me a couple of things that I did wrong. You don't want to use the garlic powder like I showed you all. You only want to use salt and pepper. And also he wanted to tell me, um, to tell you guys as far as how he does his potatoes, he parboils his potatoes half the way, and then he puts the potatoes in the bottom of the pan, um, and then he puts his, um, cabbage on top of that okay so now take a look at this cabbage i cannot wait to try it my goodness and we got some good pot liquor right there look at that this right here is the cabbage and now here is grandma lucille's potatoes amazing they got that garlic that salt and pepper and parsley flakes and they are pretty much amazing now over here we got that gorgeous cornbread can't have cabbage without your cornbread. Listen here, everybody. If you all enjoy this here video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Now listen here, everybody. 
if you don't like the recipe <laughs> and you decide to make a mean comment, <laughs> I'm going to send those comments straight to my dad's phone. <laughs> but no, if you love it, put in the comments how much you love this recipe. When I come back, I'm going to say an amazing prayer. You all are going to get that first bite. Take a look at it, everybody. Gina Young's dad style. <laughs> Cabbage making some. One more thing. My dad said don't use bell peppers in his. <laughs> okay, so don't use it for this recipe. Now listen here. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for another beautiful day today. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts and make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our minds in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. And we bind the devil away from us in Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority over this household. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy you bring us every day. Amen. Amen once again to my beautiful prayer. Look at this. Let's dive in. Now I want you all to see that. Go on, take a bite. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Look at the potatoes. <laughs> Ooh, get you some potatoes on there. We want a little piece of everything. Get on there, potato. We want some sausage. Look at this. Look at that. You guys can take a bite. Let me know what y'all think about this recipe right here. Oh, yes. Take a bite. Thanks, always. God bless.